thank you everyone for joining us this afternoon to talk about this very interesting subject, uh, the vertical city, the integration of social spaces within the vertical city. Okay, as uh, Suresh mentioned, I myself uh, have been with Ten Design for around 10 years now working in the Hong Kong studio. Uh, we have around 200 architects uh, around the globe, uh, representing yes. around 30 nationalities. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have around eight studios at the moment, um, working in many sectors uh, across the world. Okay, all right. So, social spaces. Social spaces within the fabric of the city make cities livable. Places and spaces for social interaction are essential to everyday life. We can see that at present our cities are becoming denser and higher and as a consequence of urbanization and population growth. The United Nations projects that the world's population would grow from 7.7 billion in 2019 to reach 8.5 billion in 2030, yes. 9.7 billion in 2050 and 10.9 billion in 2100. So today we have 54% of the world's population living in cities 70% are projected to be living in cities by 2050. So there are many challenges facing us as designers and opportunities which will present themselves as we consider the future of the vertical city and the future of social space within these cities. Okay. So as a result of this evolving verticality, in our cities. We can see and understand and observe potential opportunities for creating social space at height, which connects people. Okay. This is not a new concept, as we can see from this beautiful drawing. Um, this idea has been around for some time. Here we can see an image created by the American artist Erastus Salisbury Field for the Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition in 1876. It's a historic monument of the American people. Multiple levels of connection are visible. One can imagine multiple opportunities for social space within this vision of a vertical city. The next image again explores this idea of social space and connectivity within the vertical city. This drawing was commissioned in 1911. The King's View cover page title, Future New York, is the preeminent city of skyscrapers describes the potential response to the very real emerging challenges of increased population within cities. Multiple level connections are visible, creating new datum within the vertical city, providing new opportunities for social spaces and connectivity. So today we are going to review some built examples of social space integrated within the vertical city. Okay, and this simple diagram here shows us and illustrates to us that um, as cities climb ever higher, the need for new social spaces increases. Traditionally, these spaces have been located within the streetscape of the ground plane and can extend down to B1 and first floor as designers seek to expand accessibility to social spaces within the city. As the city evolves vertically, we can already begin to see examples of new social datum appearing within the design of new buildings. It is here where we can begin to understand the opportunities available. So first, before we start to understand these opportunities, we need to understand the context and the context is the wider urban grain of the city. The context of the vertical city can be, needs to be understood relative to the urban planning currently deployed within cities and the methods of evaluation used to determine how a city will evolve. The proximity of these structures within the vertical city are governed by the urban design strategies deployed to create and connect expanding districts and, uh, within existing and new CBD. The public realm and the connectivity of basement level, street level and podium level can be understood as the framework currently considered when designing. It is inevitable that as, as our cities grow, the need to connect at multiple higher levels will increase. So perhaps a first study in an evolving CBD and a skyline uh, from here in Hong Kong, where I am presenting from today. Um, we're going to compare two very different examples, one Hong Kong and one Shanghai Pudong. 
the comparison will start with Hong Kong. This old map from 1925 shows the central district of Hong Kong, which is located upon an island facing into Victoria Harbour uh, to the north and Victoria Peak uh, behind us to the south. And the city has evolved organically from a streetscape dating, dating back over 100 years. This old street image shows the proportion and scale of those streets within this particular city, which were designed to accommodate three, uh, four to five storey um, buildings with um, protective colonnades running around the base to protect from heat and rain. We can see now today from that same streetscape how the verticality of that city has exploded skyward, but the proximity of those buildings is determined by the old streetscape. So we can see that the density and minimum building separation between these structures. And here today, uh, an existing Google Earth image showing that that street network remains largely intact and unchanged today, albeit accommodating uh, buildings far, far higher uh, into the sky. So this proximity uh, between building structures has enabled a far greater level of connectivity around the streets we can see a very densely connected series of networks of pedestrian movement, uh, which have been established both above grade and below, below grade pedestrian connections flourish. Within the central district, street bridges connect retail spaces to provide an almost seamless transition through a network of connected spaces with different ownership and management. This pedestrian network of connectivity has been studied to create very intricate layered diagrams illustrating the many possible routes of horizontal movement through the city. Each of these routes also engages with and provides new social spaces within the vertical city. This close proximity makes the leap across in every direction possible. While most of the current social spaces in Hong Kong can be seen occurring within and along the elevated pedestrian no network, we can expect to see greater connection at height as the city evolves. It is this proximity of structures within the vertical city which becomes an important factor when we evaluate the opportunities for new social space within the vertical city. Something we can illustrate later on in the talk when we look at projects uh, currently undertaken by Ten Design. So the second example that I'd like to share today and look at um, is the central uh, business district of Pudong. It's a modern CBD uh, as designed in contrast to Hong Kong. The current layout can be seen as, as, uh, as the result of a pre-planned urban strategy designed to accommodate larger vertical structures and a larger vehicle road network. Here we can see the original drawing uh, from the planning authority relative to the master plan. This was actually preceded by an international competition done by many of the eminent architects at the time, Richard Rogers uh, and many others. Uh, the ideas from that competition, some of which were incorporated into this planning. So this was uh, circa late 1980s. And then we can see the current urban diagram as it is today, as built tw around 2011. And we can see that the city is uh, far more breathable uh, as a central business district with the structures being greater spaced apart, um, which helps uh, here. However, due to this uh, distribution of verticality within this location of a city, um, the distance that people have to move to connect within the city is actually greater. So we can assume that uh, the leap across the public realm, of the streetscape is far greater. So the plots of the CBD are connected. However, the, the experience is less intimate and the journey times are greater. So in summary, uh, by comparing these two different city uh, contexts, we can understand through these examples, we can see the proximity of the vertical structures within the city will need to be considered as designers seek to improve connectivity and social spaces within the vertical community. A balance is to be found between allowing the cityscape to breathe with good views, access to daylight and urban ventilation, which is, in then, which is then accessed by each structure. A point which is pertinent today as more office users seek to access good external spaces and good levels of natural ventilation. Once the, the context of the city parameters are understood, 
we can begin to evaluate the current existing solutions for the creation of social spaces within the vertical city. Okay, so we're going to now look at three built examples in the context of the vertical city, which um, look at different aspects and different ways of creating social space within the vertical city. Okay, so the first one we're gonna look at is 20 Fenchurch Street, a project by Raphael Vinoli Architects. This is a great example of new public social space being created at height, enjoying the views across the city. It's a single structure with a public garden space uh, located at the top of the tower. The section through the upper spaces illustrate the step terraces creating the sense of an amphitheater looking across the city, the space and, as the seating and the city as the stage. The social space has become and is a huge success, providing valuable uh, value at multiple levels, a destination for tourists and a valuable green space for the tenants and the working community within. Uh, the second project that I would like to highlight illustrating this idea of social spaces within the vertical city is the very interesting Shenzhen Tencent uh, HQ, Seafront Towers, which is a more private social connection between tower structures um, for around 12,000 uh, employees. Okay. So the tower, the design locates two tower structures on a single site. The designers have then sought to use the space between the two tower structures to create a series of connecting social spaces, creating a very interesting urban composition for the client. The section here illustrates the programmatic connection and the integra integration and interface with the wider population within the tower, bringing different work groups together. The creation of private social space created at height within the city. So here we can see some images of the way that the designers have utilized those connection points within the design to create new social space. Uh, a broad range of different activities are accommodated. There's a large scale multi-purpose sports hall uh, outside of the, exist uh, the structures of the office floor plate. There are knowledge and education spaces and there are climbing walls. Um, so amazing spaces for social interaction and social connectivity at height. Uh, within this uh, private development. The next scheme goes up a scale even more and on an even more heroic level, uh, the very powerful scheme by uh, Moshti Safdi Architects, Raffles City in Chongqing, uh, a very powerful statement connecting at height within the city, providing new social spaces and perhaps uh, the clarity of the overall organization suggesting this new datum existing at the upper level where people can interact and social space is created. Here we can see an aerial view of that bridge, some 300 meters long, connecting four tower structures together. So the, at a height of around 250 meters, uh, the, the bridge connecting element is referred to as the crystal and it is a fully programmed horizontal skyscraper, the architect describes, housing, housing over 10,000 square meters of amenities. The crystals, gardens, and amenities are open to the public year round. So here we can see some images of those new social spaces created at height within this vertical uh, development. Okay, so we've touched upon the broader context of the city and the way that the city defines the distances, shall we say, between the verticality of these elements. We've looked at three uh, excellent examples of how social space can be created at height within the city. And then I can now share with you some of the projects that 10 Design have on the drawing boards and under construction, which take some of these principles uh, and begin to explore social connectivity uh, within the vertical city. So the first project I'd like to share with everyone today is taking place in the city of Guangzhou. It's a new master plan di district uh, called Pajot. Uh, bottom left-hand image, you can see the 
central axis running through downtown CBD of Guangzhou. Uh, some very famous vertical structures within that context, the East and the West Tower. Um, East Tower by KPF, West Tower by Wilkinson Air Architects. The new Pajot district sits to the, to the east, uh, looking, on to, looking to the north of the Pearl River. Okay, so this is a three-dimensional study by the planning team who put forward the master plan. And it is a very interesting departure from uh, traditional urban planning, certainly within China, um, in that the parcels of land for each of the towers is much smaller, uh, which allows each of the towers to be individual. So you get a, a richer range of architectural expression and you get a greater proximity between the towers within that streetscape. So the distance between the buildings is reduced and the streetscape becomes more human, uh, and the proximity between these vertical structures is actually reduced. The context of the site is very interesting because at the, at the front of the site, we can see the old Pearl River beer factory, which already has been regenerated and has become a very vibrant F&B destination within this site. So there's already active F&B occurring on the site. And then this new tech hub as defined by the planning authorities will become a, a hub and a home for a number of um, uh, high profile technology companies, WeChat, uh, obviously Tencent, um, and a number of other companies will be located uh, within this master plan. Uh, the site that we uh, were fortunate enough to win uh, was the area demarcated in the red box. And that shows um, two tower structures, which we are designing. One is a hotel and one is an office uh, development. Okay. So the next image shows uh, the plan drawing of this master plan, which was developed by Professor Sun from the South China University of Technology. And you can see here very immediately the context, the parcelization of these uh, different sites is much more intimate. So very simple structures of podium and tower. What's interesting actually, if you look top left of this master plan is the China, um, is the Guangzhou Daily newspaper development, which is a, a size of land, which we would more typically associate with um, parcelization in China. And you can see the uh, extent of the Pearl River Brewery and the F&B district. And then our proposed, our site is enjoying great proximity to this wonderful F&B district. And there's a new park uh, currently under construction to the east of our hotel structure. But a very interesting context for us as designers to be working within. So here we can see uh, an aerial view. This was taken about two to three years ago. Um, you can see the very uh, iconic gateway bridge structure, which links across the river. The Guangzhou Daily is just to the north sorry, just to the south of that arch. And then the district uh, that we've just seen master planned uh, is just starting to come under construction. So this is about three years ago. That view is actually taken from the West Tower done by Wilkinson Air, the lobby level of the Four Seasons Hotel. So a great height looking down onto the Pajot district. Okay. Um, so our two sites on this image are the two green uh, towers, left and right, uh, up, along this public road. And as, our, as part of our design approach to the site, uh, we saw an opportunity to create a strong and unique statement between these two sites, linking them together. So the next slide probably illustrates this even more clearly. So we understood the vibrancy of this existing uh, F&B district, the Pearl River, uh, brewery and the new park, the green area, which has, has some of the brewing structures still uh, being used and regenerated within that. So our idea, given the proximity of these two towers to come together during the competition, was to link the two towers together to create a new public space. So the developer had the opportunity to give something back to the city. So the next image, also we had the proximity of the park. So we felt that the addition of this new so social space within the overall development would add to the city and add to the experience of the district, okay? A new uh, garden space that would be accessible by the public linking the two tower structures together. And then this image from the competition really illustrating our aspiration at that point to celebrate this uh, incredible um, skyline of Guangzhou, which is also constantly evolving. 
uh, the East Tower by KPF, the West Tower by Wilkinson Air Architects. So we wanted to create a new social space at height at around 100 meters, uh, Canton Tower you can see in the background and the Pearl River below. So a fantastic opportunity to create a very memorable space, a new destination within the city. So here you can see an early concept sketch of the two tower structures uh, and how we had proposed to link the two tower structures today so, uh, together. So the client uh, obviously very, uh, was enthused by the idea, to, uh, took the commission on, uh, but it did give them uh, some challenges in the future crossing into the public realm, which I will talk about uh, later on. So here we can see a simple diagram illustrating, sorry, illustrating the new green spaces to be provided, new green spaces to provide it within the development and the connection with the existing F&B district and the new park. So one of the critical things when creating public space at height is obviously accessibility. If it is to be truly public, then it has to be accessible 24 seven. And the planning department actually insisted upon exactly that. So the core of the hotel structure uh, integrates three public lifts, which lift people up day and night to this new public garden space elevated at height. So the destination of this social space very much becomes an integrated part of, part of the public experience of coming to this area of the master plan. Something to understand and something we are aware of when we think about connecting structures together is how that structure then reacts and interacts with the program space of the two towers as they reach that very critical level of the connection. So on the left-hand side, we have the hotel, which is the cafe, the pool, the gyms, all working in harmony and feeding off of the uh, footfall and the public who will visit that public sky deck. And then on the right-hand side, we have the office development, which is also bringing together uh, F&B and retail space. Okay. Uh, one of the ideas we, we were developing at the time was the idea that the garden would start the idea of a, a vertical green valley uh, space of private and public terraces uh, at height. So here's an early sketch exploring all of the different activities and program that we can actually accommodate at the top, integrating some private space and public space as well. And here you can see um, an image which is illustrating the idea of the evolution of the top of the tower, creating this green valley within the context of the city with the main public space creating the focal point, which is linking the two structures together, allowing people to move with ease between the two structures. If you're in the office, you can move to this level and enjoy the restaurants and the facilities within the hotel. Uh, conversely, you can utilize the meeting rooms and uh, central spaces within the, within the office. Uh, here, a simple programmatic diagram. So the office is around 34,000 square meters, hotel 36,000 square meters, and around 20,000 square meters of retail distributed at the upper level and the lower level. Uh, both, both towers have around four levels of retail and F&B at the base, articulated by a series of stepping volumes, continuing the external green terrace concept in dialogue with the adjacent park. Okay, so here we can see um, the MLP of the development, the park is located to the east. Public road, you can see passing below the tower structure. The span between the two towers is around 40 meters. So here, uh, a three-dimensional image of the realization of the, that green valley and the, and the private terraces on the left coming off the office, uh, the public terraces coming off the hotel and then the public deck in the middle. You can see the public road below, okay. But, uh, and this plan really starts to illustrate the simplicity of the connection. So the cause, the magenta lifts, uh, lifting the general public up to that uh, exhibition space at the lower level. And then above that, we have a garden space, but very ease of movement. Structurally, it's a single story truss, which bears off of a pair of columns either side, which is then connected to the core. Um, here's a three dimensional image, which shows that integration of public access into the core and then public uh, connection into that exhibition space. Then you can see again the upper level deck connection here between the two tower structures. Uh, the floor plates are around 1400 square meters and the bridge in the middle is around a thousand square meters. Okay. And here you can see a recent construction photo then of that structure realized along the Pearl River Delta. You can see some of the other towers coming up. The 
district is fairly high, pro high profile. We've got Jean Nouvelle providing WeChat, Tencent's headquarters. You've got SOM uh, working with some of the taller tower structures within the back. So uh, the original intent of the competition realized with this elevated new public space within the context of Shenzhen. Here you can see uh, it took around 17 hours to lift the bridge into position. Uh, between the two towers so obviously going through the night and then finally the image at the end you can see this is the new public garden space which will exist between the two towers looking back at the skyline of Guangzhou that enjoying that uh, dynamic skyline so the original intent realized um, over a period of around three years okay so the second project I'd like to share with you from 10 design is a uh, a very interesting scheme that we're doing from a prominent developer in China, the northern city of Xi'an, the site sits, historic city of Xi'an, the site sits to the southeast, um, largely um, uh, surrounded by residential. Here you can see the wider MLP. So our twin tower competition scheme was to consider how to integrate with a wider retail and office network of pedestrian streets. Uh, and we saw the opportunity here because of the proximity of the two tower structures and how close they are together. Can we begin to explore social spaces between these two structures at height, bringing public and the working community within that structure together? And can that vertical space begin to be seen as uh, a new vertical street uh, as well, which is uh, expanding that internal, that lower level connection of public space? Here you can see the red line of the site and the proximity of the two towers. So they're very close together. We did a number of GFA studies relative to uh, the overall design. Overall GFA is around 260,000 uh, square meters, um, most predominantly office space. Um, Tower one, the taller structure is up at 380 meters in height with a floor plate of around 2,600. Tower two is 200 meters in height with a floor plate of around 2,000 square meters. Here you can see some early sketches that we were working through with the client during an interview process, looks at the proximity of the towers and how we can begin to potentially weave them together. Here's some simple three-dimensional diagrams which we were using to explore the possibility of social space connecting up through those structures. Here you can see the floor plans, the proximity of those towers so close together, why not link them together? Why not create social space linking those tower structures together? Here you can see the diagram vertically between those two structures. So each refuge floor where it's convenient to integrate the primary structure, we see a series of new town hall, uh, town square spaces defining each level in the, in the concept of the section. Here's some simple freehand sketches that show the experience of those atrium spaces moving up through. Those atrium spaces also able to act as buffer spaces, tempering the air coming into the office spaces that are directly adjacent. Here you can see an atrium space captured over the 10 floors between the refuge spaces, the lower town, new town squares at the lower level. And then an elevated view looking uh, through that new uh, social atrium space with the, off the larger office tower, enjoying views back to the wider context and the mount, beautiful mountains surrounding uh, Xi'an. So here you can see a eye level perspective view through that pedestrian network, looking up at the gap between the two towers and that creation of the new spaces. And here, a final image of the overall development, which is currently in concept design stage with the client. Um, so finally, um, the studio uh, continues to explore ideas of uh, connectivity and social spaces uh, within the vertical context of the vertical city. Um, we, this is one of our schemes that's currently on the, on the drawing boards. We um, have taken the idea of traditional single towers and look again looking at how we can create a dynamic series of external green public spaces and internal social spaces, which will come together to create uh, an organic integration of external social spaces and internal amenity spaces. So we can see that developers around the world through cities are, are looking at creating, uh, adding value uh, by creating uh, better amenity space integrated, better social spaces integrated within these vertical uh, developments. So I think in conclusion, what is next? What comes from this continuing evolution? We can see that there are many factors affecting the size and location and availability of integrating social spaces at height within the vertical city, that the possibilities to imagine are endless. The practical application of these ideas and their benefits, both socially and commercially, have to be carefully considered. 
uh, we would suggest that the primary obstacle to be to the continued evolution of the idea is political and economic. The commercial market will be wary of connecting their projects to others at height in the same way that it is currently beneficial and promoted to do so at lower levels. Connected podium within a dense city is a win-win for both owners and promoted by planning authorities to ease movement through cities. We can see this ever present within the current development criteria in China, the most successful example of which uh, as a second or third datum within a city can be seen already within the experience of moving through Hong Kong. Um, to truly realize this potentially fourth datum of horizontal connection of social spaces uh, and interaction at height, uh, many aspects will have to be defined and observed. Public rights of way, fire code, utilities, and how public access can be provided and controlled, and also the commercial considerations of linking across the public realm. Uh, we at 10 Design certainly look forward to the exciting possibilities of new spaces within the vertical city. Thank you.